Today we're going to go over how to find your perfect Halo Infinite settings. And notice how I say your perfect Halo settings and not the perfect Halo settings. Asking pro players and popular streamers their settings and their sensitivity and everything like that is probably one of the most common questions you see if you watch a stream or something like that, other than just the basic questions. However, what I don't think people realize is that settings and sensitivity and all those things, while there are some general premises, a lot of it is personal preference. And so today we're going to go over all the different settings in Halo Infinite that you might set. And while I will be showing you my personal settings, obviously I'm not a pro, but I'm going to kind of try and explain the different settings to you so that you can find the settings that work best for your play style and what you're most comfortable with. While straight up copying someone else's settings can be a good starting point, I think it's important to know what the different settings do so that you can kind of tinker them and mess with them yourself and kind of find your own settings. So without further ado, let's get started. So first we're going to start here with the button loadout. So you'll notice here that I use a custom loadout. Basically what mine is, is just modified bumper jumper. For the most part, the only thing that I've changed is I've put grenades on right thumbstick and zoom on left trigger. So like I said, button layout is going to be totally personal preference. It's also going to matter if you have a scuff or an elite controller or anything like that that has paddles on the back or how you hold the controller. Do you have a claw grip or do you just hold it normally? All of these things are going to play into what button layout you use. I currently just use a standard Xbox controller and I claw intermittently. I don't claw all the time other than occasionally to hit some of the face buttons when I need to for things like reload and equipment. Now the main reason that I use modified bumper jumper is that I like having zoom on left trigger. Now the reason that I use zoom on left trigger is because I find left trigger a lot easier to hit mid gunfight when you're de-scoped as opposed to having to hit the right thumbstick. I find it a little bit more clean as hitting the right thumbstick can be a little bit awkward if you're also trying to use that thumbstick to aim at your opponent that you're shooting. So that's what I use for button layout. You can use any of the button layouts. It's whatever you find most comfortable. The coolest thing about Halo Infinite is you can do totally custom keybinds even on a controller and that's really cool. So for thumbstick layout, I just use default. You can use legacy or southpaw if you wish, but yeah, I just use default. I think most people you're going to find are going to use default. Vibration, I turn off and the reason I do that is I just find it a little bit awkward to have my controller vibrating when I'm trying to shoot people and focus, so I turn it off. I'd recommend turning it off, but obviously you can leave it on. The invert controls I have off. Obviously, if you like your controls to be inverted, you would turn these on. Next up, we have hold to crouch. This is an important one that I like to have on. This requires you to hold down the crouch button in order to crouch, and I think this is a lot better than having toggle crouch. It works nicely with things like slide as you can hold it to slide, and then when you let go of it, obviously you come out of the slide, you're going to stand up. Otherwise, awkwardly, you would click it to slide and then, you know, slide into it, and then your guy would stay crouched. On top of that, this can allow you to do things like Gandhi hopping, although that's not really that much of a thing in Halo Infinite, but also this will allow you to more effectively kind of hit your crouch jumps and everything like that, as you can hold crouch when you're jumping as opposed to having to tap it, and then tap it again once you land, that would be kind of awkward. Likewise, I turn off hold to zoom. You can use hold to zoom, but the main reason I don't use it is I find it awkward with D-scope. So with hold to zoom, let's say you're holding down left trigger, because that's my keybinds. If you get D-scoped, you would have to let go of the left trigger and then re-click it. Without hold to zoom, though you just click it again and I find that a lot cleaner and a lot more effective. Next up is hold to sprint. I don't have that one on just because I'd find it awkward to hold A all the time when I'm sprinting so I have that one off. Next up is movement assisted steering. I just turned that one off. That's a vehicle thing and I think it's kind of awkward to have on. Maintain sprint is a setting that I really like to have on. This is going to have the game kind of automatically resume sprinting after performing certain actions. This is really nice for things like flag juggling or coming out of a slide or something like that. Next up we have auto clamber. So this is going to automatically mantle when you're airborne near an accessible ledge. This one I really like having off. So without it off, if you want to clamber after you jump, you have to let go and then hold your jump button again to clamber. But I really like this because it gives you the flexibility if you actually want to clamber up onto an object. If you have auto clamber on, there are situations where your Spartan is going to automatically clamber when you didn't want to clamber. It can also mess with some of your crouch jumps and everything like that. So I really recommend you just get used to manually clambering and you have this one off. Now the next setting is step jump. So this is going to reduce jump height when jumping onto lower ledges. I really like this one as it's going to have your Spartan jump a little bit lower if you're jumping onto low ledges and I just find this very useful because then your character isn't always jumping at full jump height. You can do little jumps to jump onto slightly elevated platforms and I think that's very helpful. Another nice thing about this is say you're behind a lower object. With step jump you could jump up while you're shooting but 
but you wouldn't jump all the way up and expose maybe your whole body like you would if you didn't have step jump on. Now these next sections are going to be the main things I think people really are looking for when they ask for people's settings and that's everything related to aiming. So sensitivity and acceleration. So look acceleration is going to control how fast your aim accelerates as you're holding the thumbstick. This will make it so that your aim kind of turns faster you know the more you obviously push the thumbstick and it'll accelerate to kind of help you turn around quicker. I like it right down the middle. I use a three but these are going to be things that are very tailored to you. Next up for horizontal and vertical sense I use a six. This is just something you guys need to play with. I really recommend just playing with it finding a sensitivity you're comfortable with finding out if you like being a low sense player a high sense player. Make sure it fits your play style and find something you're comfortable with. I like to be on the middle to lower end because you can be a little bit more consistent with it. Although if you play the super high sensitivities you can hit those nutty clips that you see from people who clearly have higher sensitivities however the downside to that is it's going to be harder to control and might make you more inconsistent especially if you're not on your game 100% when you're playing next up is zoom sensitivity so here you can go through all the different zooms in the game and you can set different sensitivities maybe you want the sniper scope to be quicker maybe you want the BR scope to be quicker all that stuff I leave it all normal but you can adjust that if you wish now the next section that is pretty important is going to be your dead zones and your max input threshold so you have the move thumbstick and the look thumbstick and as i talk about them the definitions for this apply to both thumbsticks but obviously you can have different settings for both of them so your center dead zone is going to set how far the thumbstick has to be from the center basically where it rests before the minimum input registers the lower you have these dead zones the more responsive it's going to feel though every controller is built differently and a lot of times you have to have these dead zones otherwise you're going to experience drift my suggestion with dead zones and you can play with this on your own is I like to have them as low as possible where I'm not experiencing drift as this is going to allow your thumbsticks and your aim to feel as responsive as possible without having the downsides of playing with zero and having drift. If you have a perfect controller that has no drift and you can play zero dead zones, I'd probably recommend that. But basically just play with it and put it as low as possible without having any drift. If you don't know what drift is, it's basically when your controller will constantly look to to the left or to the right or up and down when you're not touching it as a lot of xbox controllers aren't perfect next up is the max input threshold so this is going to be how far your thumbstick has to be from the edge before the maximum input registers the higher the number the less far you have to push your thumbstick to the edge for the max input threshold to be hit so the lower value you have here gives you a larger acceleration curve while the higher value is going to reduce slow turn i like to play with zero max input threshold as it gives me the most control over my aim but this will sometimes cause your character to turn slower as you do have to basically pin the thumbstick all the way to the edge if you want to hit those max acceleration values now obviously we're in the move section i'm more talking in the aiming portion but the definitions for these settings are the same whether it's the move thumbstick or the look thumbstick i find the look thumbstick a lot more important than the move thumbstick but you do want your move thumbstick to obviously feel good too i keep them the same so both thumbsticks kind of feel the same when you're using them, but obviously when I'm talking about these I'm mostly talking in terms of aiming last up here is the axial dead zone and that's going to be how far you have to move the thumbstick on the X or Y axis before the minimum input registers lower value here again feels more responsive and higher value reduces drift same thing like we talked about with the center dead zones before basically I like these as low as possible without experiencing drift so just play with it and lower them as much as you can and basically that's going to do it for my controller settings like I said I wanted to explain why I use different settings so that you can find your perfect settings because that's what's more important you don't want to just copy other people's settings as they might not fit your play style as well as finding your own settings would other than that the only other settings i really want to talk about are field of view i use 105 this is totally personal preference i also cap my maximum frame rate at 144 frames because i have 144 hertz monitor so there's no reason for me to really go above that other than that i play mostly low settings other than texture quality i turn that up to ultra but again these are going to be personal preference if you have a beefier PC or you don't care as much about frames, you can turn up some of these settings to make the game look a little bit prettier. I've always focused on frame rate over the visuals of a game, so I basically turn everything as low as I can while making sure the game doesn't look absolutely terrible. Other than that, the only other thing that I would recommend is down here in the sensory section. I would recommend turning all of this stuff off as I feel it can be distracting and kind of pull you out of the experience and you can stay a lot more focused with this stuff on. Things like blur when you're sprinting and having explosions and everything like that while cool I don't think is necessary when you're playing a competitive shooter 
same with things like screen shake and exposure and the full screen effects as the screen shake is going to set the intensity of camera movement during high impact events like explosions equipment use and cinematic sequences so the lower you turn that down or in my case turn it off you're going to have a lot less screen shake and it's going to allow you to stay more focused same with exposure this is going to set the intensity of things like bright flashes during explosions equipment use and cinematic sequences again for the same reason i'd crank that all the way down and full screen effects these are like your shield recharges and things like that again i turned it as low as possible because i don't want that stuff cluttering up my screen speed lines if you have these on when you're sprinting you get those like anime speed lines i don't like those but you can leave those on if you want and lastly sharpening i turned that one all the way down too this is going to set the crispest of edges and texture details so by lowering this it results in a more blended image while higher sharpness produces a more pronounced image this one's pretty much personal preference i like it all the way off but you can put it at whatever you want other than that guys there's really not that much to go through you know you have your audio and your ui this stuff's totally personal preference and the only other thing even worth kind of mentioning is in the accessibility section you can make things like the text bigger and everything like that and you can also change things like the player outline colors i use the default colors but obviously if you watch a lot of streams or a lot of videos you can use whatever colors you find most comfortable and most convenient to use because you just want to be able to tell your teammates and your enemies apart as fast as possible and yeah that's going to do it for the video guys i hope this helps you set your personal halo infinite settings obviously we didn't go over mouse and keyboard settings because for the most part i would use the same settings the only big thing for mouse and keyboard is kind of sensitivity and stuff like that but i mostly play controller these days but if you want to know when i do play mouse and keyboard i use a mouse sensitivity of 1.2 with a dpi of 800 that's what i find best it is a little bit on the lower side of sensitivities i believe but for fps games i like to be on the lower end again it is personal preference but if you are playing mouse and keyboard you don't want to have super high sensitivity as it is going to be hard for you to be consistent and to track and everything like that so you can play with that as you wish but obviously this is mostly focused on your controller settings another setting i would turn off if you're playing mouse is mouse acceleration i turn that one off as it messes with your muscle memory when you're playing with mouse and keyboard other than that guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did you know what to do follow me over on twitch i stream tuesdays thursdays and saturdays and i'd love to have you guys hang out and chat while i grind onyx or whatever i'm doing that night other than that follow me over on twitter or instagram i do giveaways and all sorts of fun stuff and with that said i'll see you all next time